So the last class we were talking about uh, economic and economic growth. We're talking about sustainability. So we talked about the urban rural divide, future population growth, income inequality in countries, the Gini coefficient. So we talked about, we mentioned some reasons for inequality, that's where we finished. So we need to talk about uh, what's, can we just use, what do you think, can we just use GDP to measure how well the country is doing? Do you think that's okay? Discuss with your partner. Do you think we can say this country is great because they have a high GDP? Or do we need to think about other things too? So discuss with your partner. The high, does high GDP mean we have a great country? Or not? So our country has high GDP. Let's say it's seventy thousand dollars per capita per year. Okay? Does that mean we're much better than the country which has a twenty thousand GDP? You understand GDP per capita? Yes. So what do you think? Is GDP per capita the only thing we should think about? On the country's performance? The country is doing a good job if it has a high GDP per capita? Hmm? Yes or no? Why not? Most countries, the governments, they're looking at economic growth. They want to grow the economy increase the GDP. So why not? Why did you say no? Capita is per person. It depends on each person, but because like, for example, even though we, the GDP per capita is $20,000, but the person who have a less than that and the person who have more than that is different so we could have a high inequality right that's one reason any, any other problem hmm? what about a country like qatar in the middle east they have a lot of oil money so they have very high gdp is that a high performing country no hmm? no why not <coughs> Yes, they're dependent on oil, right? They haven't developed their education, they haven't developed their health, okay? they haven't developed other things. So, the UN made this Human Development Index because politicians were too focused on economic growth and GDP. Okay? So, this Human Development Index is like a balance. It uses a logarithm of income per capita. Using the logarithm, each higher level of income boosts the HDI by a smaller increment. It means that if we are a country with just 10,000 GDP per person and we increase to 20,000, then that can mean a big increase for our country. But if we are a country with 70,000 and we increase to 80,000, does that make much difference in people's lives? Their income increased from 70,000 to 80,000 a year. Does that make a big difference in their life? Or not? No, right? Here, does the difference between earning 10,000 and 20,000 dollars a year, does that make a big difference? Yes. Yes. So they made a logarithm. It means that as the income gets higher and higher and higher, if we increase our GDP, it doesn't increase our HDI score much. Okay? If we increase our, if we are a Low income country and GDP is more important. Okay? We increase our GDP then get a higher we can get a higher score. The HDI also uses indicators of educational attainment, so such as mean and expected years of schooling. So how many year, years do people spend in school? And indicators of health, e.g. life expectancy. So how long do people live? So if we look at Qatar, maybe they don't have a lot of years in school. A lot of people might drop out of school, or their health system is not good, so people might die early. So uh, we can see this 
is showing the world's uh, HDI index score. So we can see that the dark green country is getting a higher score on the HDI index and the light green country. Okay, so noticeable from this, we can see there are countries like South Korea. It's 27th in GDP per capita. Right, South Korea's GDP is about $35,000, lower than 26 other countries. But it's 12th in the HDI. Why? Because Korea has good education system and good health system. Okay? So it gets a better score in the HDI. What about Kuwait? Kuwait is the third richest country in the world in GDP, a lot of oil money. But on the HDI, it's 54th, really low, because it has poor health system and poor education system. Okay, so the HDI is a good indicator for human well-being. So now you guys are going to look at the HDI on the home page. So go to the Google and Google HDI. Okay. Just type in HDI. And click on the first link. Okay. So uh, go to country reports. When you get here, just go HDI in Google, click on the first link. <coughs> country reports. Okay. So we can see some example uh, reports here. Okay. So uh, we can see reports about the different countries. Okay. You can also go to the data. So we have the table, right? We can see the table. So click on data and table. So we can see the countries on the table. What do they take into account here? Life expectancy. Do you understand life expectancy? How long do you expect to, to live? How old will you be when you die? 150? What's your life expectancy in Korea? Korea, number 17. 81.9. Okay, the average. Countries higher, Switzerland, Singapore. Okay, most countries, but you can see some countries here is low. If we go down, we're going to see some very low countries at the bottom. Just 55, maybe the war zone, right? 63. 55 in Guinea, 58. Okay. Uh, then we have years of schooling. Okay, so Australia, very high. Years, average years in school. Korea, 16.9. Mean average years of schooling. And then the gross national income. Korea is about 33.8. Okay? So we can see Norway is the top one. High income, 64,000. Uh, a lot of years in school and a high life expectancy. Gets a high score. So do you have any question about that? You can look through that website in your own time. Do you think that's better? Which is better, using just GDP or using the HDI? HDI, HDI is better, right? You can see more clearly about how countries are performing, not just in the money. Even the HDI, though, is, is a little bit simple, right? Just use it if they spend time in school, but it's better. Next one is the World Happiness Report. Where are the happiest countries in the world? Bangladesh. Hmm? Bangladesh. Bangladesh. We can see the blue, dark blue countries, happy countries, Australia, South America. Even though they're very poor and might not do well on the HDI index, right? They have a high score on happiness. Is the film, are people in the Philippines happy? Quite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are not happy? Korea kind of happy, a little bit, not dark blue, <laughs> right? Uh, similar to Russia and so on. Okay. We can see these guys in the Middle East are happy. So, what do you think? Is that more important than the HDI? Which is better, HDI or World Happiness Report? HDI. HDI. 
HDI, why? Why would, shouldn't we worry about people shopping us that much? Whether they just go and ask people, how happy do you feel between 1 and 10, right? How happy do you feel between 1 and 10? In your life, generally. 6, right? That's probably going to be Korea's score. <laughs> score for Korea. I'm from Ireland, so I should say 9. <laughs> right? That kind of thing. Okay. What about in the Philippines? On 1 to 10, how happy are you? Five. Generally, five. A little bit less than Korea, okay. Four, three. That's about right. So, why do you think we shouldn't be that worried about happiness, people's happiness? Because it's depend on like people's experience or like, emotional that they need. Mm -hmm. So people, maybe they just don't know. They don't know there's a better health system or education system in another country. If the happiness, there's no standard, like, mm. I mean, if there's no standard, what is happy? It's hard to measure, right? Some people may use a different scale. Some people, like, think higher number. Right? So it's hard to measure. But there is one country, do you know, Bhutan, it's a small country, and they don't, their aim is not for GDP. Their aim is just for people to be happy. So they don't care about the GDP and those kind of things. They just want people to be happy. Okay. So, uh, anyway, that's another way to measure how well countries are doing. Are people happy in the country? Okay. Do we have good health and education system? Maybe the weather also affects the happiness, people's happiness. Better yeah. lifestyle, right? Work-life balance. Do you want to go to South America on holidays? It's cheap and everybody is happy. All right, you can do dancing in Brazil. <laughs> At the carnival, do you know the carnival? Mm -hmm. They like dancing, those kind of things. They have nice, a lot of fruit and nice weather. Mm. So, the question is then, uh, are the countries converging or diverging? Okay, are we going to have more equality in the world or more inequality in the world? Okay. Do you understand convergence? Converge means to come together or come closer. Diverge means to go apart, come different. So we have different arguments made about uh, whether they're going to converge or diverge. So the first one is the industrial revolution. This is divergence. So in the, when did we have the industrial revolution? What year? When did the industrial revolution start? The 19th century, right? Around 1850, something like that. Why? What, what was the cause of the industrial revolution? What did they invent? Make com conveyor belt. Oh. Steam, steam. Steam engine, right? The steam engine can use the belt to make power. Do you understand steam? From boiling the water, the steam engine in the UK, in Britain. So they made that, then they made a lot of things like telephone, what else? Roads, like railroad, car, linked to the steam engine, rails and cars, okay, TV, okay? all those kind of things, movies. So, internet. So that's causing the divergence because the UK developed those things. So the UK economy starts to grow, right? Most economies were around here. And then the UK economy starts to grow much faster than the other economies. Okay. Uh, the other economies involved in the Industrial Revolution, the same, start to grow very quickly. Uh, then we have imperialism, also caused divergence. We talked about imperialism a little bit in the last time. Do you like empires? Do you like empires? No. We don't have empires anymore, but... We had empires up until the Second World War. Always the world had an empire. Like the ruler, and the Roman Empire, and the Greek Empire, and the French, right, and the British Empire. And then in the Second World War, it was a fight between Germany, the UK, the US, Russia, to see who's going to be the world empire. Who won the war for the world empire? No one? Somebody won. Somebody lost. Who won? 
Russia and the US, right? So they, we had the Cold War between Russia and the US. You understand the Cold War. Nowadays we have the US, right? Russia is not as strong because the US economy developed faster, right? Do you think you're living in the United States Empire? Is there an army, US Army base in the Philippines? Yes. Is there a US Army base in Korea? Yes. Are you living in US Empire? Or not? No. No? <laughs> no, right? Some parts look like Empire, but uh, other parts is not like Empire, right? The US doesn't come in and take all the money from your country like they did in the past. So, imperialism, they just took all of the money and the resources from the countries, okay? Who took all the money and resources from the Philippines? Spanish? Yeah. Right, Japanese came to Korea, the English came to Ireland. Okay, so we're all victims. <laughs> <laughs> we can all uh, complain about the, the imperialism. Us. Hmm? Us. Yes, bad countries, bad <laughs> imperialist countries, right? <laughs> so that caused the divergence because they took all of the resources from those countries. So after World War II, we have convergence. The countries is coming back closer again. Because imperialism is finished, the countries can't take advantage as much of the other countries. Technological developments, convergence. Okay, so the internet is causing convergence because we can't now send the emails to the other side of the world easily. We can do business easily in other countries. In the Industrial Revolution, it was kind of confined to one country. But now with the technological development, we can set, sell the information or swap the information to different countries in different parts of the world, and we can start the company anywhere. Economic reforms is causing convergence. So example, China. China now has the GDP of over $10,000. It's growing quickly. So economic reforms means the countries are opening up. Which country did not open up yet? A country that still hasn't opened up. I'll give you a hint, it's very close to here. North Korea. Hmm? North Korea, right? So if North Korea opens up, then they can also have more convergence. Okay? So when communism fell in the 80s, we have China, we have India, we have Russia. Okay? All those countries opening up. So we have a convergence situation. So there. What do you think? Discuss with your partner. What do you think will happen in the future? Do you think there will be more inequality between countries? Divergence, they'll be getting further away. Or more convergence between the lower developed countries, less developed countries, and developed countries? So discuss with your partner. What do you think will happen in the future? Countries will get closer together. Who thinks divergence further away? Why do you think convergence? Yes. Thank you. 
So you think so that to avoid the war, the countries will develop yeah. more equally. Okay. Does anybody think divergence? No, everybody agrees. So we can have a look at the, as we said, Jeffrey Sachs wrote this book, and he very kindly put his course up for free and his book up for free on the Coursera website, right? So we can read the book. Uh, here we can read the chapter, it's good practice, okay? We can see this section here about convergence and divergence, okay? So we can read this more detail here in the book. This is chapter uh, two, right? We can see on the readings, chapter two, chapter one, okay? And we can go back to the chapters. So, next question is, why do some countries stay poor? So discuss with your partner. Why is it that countries don't change? They're not developing. We talked about the 50 transitional economies. They're not really developing. Why are they staying poor? Geography. Temp do you understand temperate zones? Temperate means the temperature is more normal, not very high or very low. Coastal zones develop faster. 
and also disease areas don't develop. So, for example, in Sub-Saharan Africa, they have malaria. Problem with malaria. Disease, right? Imperial, the history of imperialism, we discussed a little bit already. Okay? So, instead of just one simple di diagnosis, stop your corruption, one prescription, cut your spending, or one referral, go to the IMF for treatment, the effective development fractioneer should make a diagnosis that is accurate for the conditions, history, geography, culture, and economic structure of each country. That's clinical economics. So we're going to go through uh, this checklist here. Uh, you wrote some of them on the board, right? Poverty trap. That we'll talk about poverty trap is loan. If I get a loan, right? And then the interest on the loan keeps coming and I can't pay back the loan, so I don't have enough money to pay back the loan. So I keep just earning money just to pay the interest. Okay? So some people, individuals are stuck in the poverty trap, right? They have a lot of loans and they just keep working, just paying the interest. Whereas if they could pay off the loan, and then they could start to move on. But it's like a trap. Do you understand trap? You guys talked about traps, trapping people in your midterm assignment, right? <laughs> What kind of trap did you talk about? The net? Yeah. Catch people in the net? Yeah. Well, a little bit like a net. Bad economic policies. Spending too much money on the wrong things. Uh, financial insolvency. The government has no money. Physical geography. We mentioned uh, coastal areas. Haiti always has a hurricane. Do you understand hurricane? Yeah. In the Philippines, do you have a lot of hurricanes? Kind of. Earthquakes? Yeah. Earthquakes? Anything? Other problems? Uh, floods. Floods? floods and, uh, volcano. Even volcanoes? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all of the... All of the disasters. Every time there's a disaster, it's like you have to pay money for the disaster and try yes. to recover, right? Yeah. Especially the buildings that are destroyed by the... Uh, have you guys ever been in a, no. a natural disaster? No. Natural disaster? Yes. Blood. It's yes. Blood. Blood. In, our, in our house, it's like we're in <coughs> a resort. Half of our house is full of water. Half your house was full of water? Yeah. Here? Yes. When was that? Every year. Every year? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Every year. What yeah. month? Not just one. August. Like but August. August. Stuff like that. Oh August. <laughs> What do you do then? Uh, we're going to another place and then stay there. Stay there? Yeah. Then just you, have, you have to spend money to tidy and clean yeah. those things every year. Okay, so we saw recently Haiti had a big uh, disaster too. Right? Then we have poor governance, cultural barrier, cultural problems. Like in India, we have the caste system, inequality. Do you know the caste system in India? Right? Some people is culturally can't move up from their class. And geopolitics, like Afghanistan is caught what's caught between the East and the West, right? Between Russia and the US. So there always was some kind of war or problem around Afghanistan. It's hard to develop. So we'll talk about that in more detail in the next class. Okay? So let's finish there for today. Thank <laughs> you.